December 11, 2013. This is the American Meteor Society website. And each one of these lines is a different report of a different fireball. Now, some of them that are close were probably the different people seeing the same fireball and were slightly off on the angles. Now, each one of the icons you can click on on this site, and I will link it. But, guys, the one that exploded and rattled the houses over Arizona last night, some of the radar information was that it was 3,076 feet high, magnitude minus 18. Now, notice that's brighter than a full moon at minus 12, 7, 4. The sun's minus 26. It fragmented, then exploded. It traveled 90 seconds from Tucson before the sound of the explosion was heard. It had a green glow changing to red and yellow as it fragmented apart. And uh, the main reports are it came from the north to the south, and that's how it's, it tracked on radar. Now, one report was Gemini. The other was the Andromeda. It's, there's two different reports. It depends on what news channel you read and who they were talking to at NASA about this or at the different meteor groups. But the Andromeda is from Comet uh, 3D Bila. You see that? Now, the uh, Geminides come from Phaethion here. Now, 32 Phaethion is the parent object of the Comet of 1490 that wiped out the Chinese fleet, guys. Now, you see the angles. Phaethion is a little steeper. It dives in just a little deeper than a Bela. Now, again, Phaethion at the top, Geminides, Bela in the bottom is the uh, quadrants. But I'm going to tilt these down, and let's look at the angle on it, and I'll show you how you can tell north and south and east and west on these directions. And it's got to do with uh, the angle that they come in. At the top, Phaethion, the Geminides, it has a crossing pattern. And because it's coming in over the earth, over the top, you're going to have that north to south, just like the one that exploded last night, guys. Now, in the bottom, the 3D Bila, you're going to have an east to west flow. So you can you saw both of those on the report. So we're going through both of the meteor showers. And again, they're talking about meteor storms. And when they start shaking your house like the one over Russia, it's time to get a big heads up, guys. I also want to read you two reports, one about Mars inciting spring and about ISON and the International Space Station. Now, they're becoming more concerned. You can pause this and read it, but they are even investigating techniques of what could be used to prevent cometary debris from hitting more Mars orbiting spacecraft as the comet and planet converge. Mars-bound comet was only discovered January 3rd. That's this year, guys, 2013. They always say distant Oort cloud. That's always the excuse, and they never even proved the Oort cloud existed. It's just like wherever. But anyway, they are the Mars-bound comet was discovered again just this year. Uh, from the, the Siding Spring Observatory in Australia is where it's got its name. Now, again, the closest approach, October 19th at 11.45 a.m. So you, we've got a spread here, guys, of events happening like the trumpets that we're about to start seeing up until this time. It said that it will be sunward of Mars. It says it's a slight possibility the comet could graze or even hit Mars. The safety measures would include postponing the orbiter so they are on the other side of Mars at the time of coming impact. Now, if that's not crazy enough, guys, they <clears throat> in this exciting spring, you've seen the JPL on it. It's going to be coming in from the bottom. And one thing I would do on it that is good, and I'll show you that, is it comes in, and if it does uh, hit Mars or come close enough to where it frags, gets fragmented because of the gravitational tug, Notice Earth, it would be on the other side, so it won't be a scatter shot, hit Mars, and scatter over Earth. Now, about 10 months later, we would be coming around in that area. But we, that's not something other than disrupting the inner solar system. We'll get to that then. But guys are also worried about the International Space Station. And they're bragging, saying they have built something that God cannot tear down, my friends. They're talking about that uh, the particles that are gonna that are too small to penetrate the walls of our satellites, and they don't stand a chance against the heavy shielding of the International Space Station. Are you listening to that, guys? You don't think God can take that thing down? The hope he said, "Big house in the sky." Now I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of it, but they're concerned. Now this is the debris trail of January 15th. The the incoming. 
And you remember how I was showing you guys that 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 thing was multiple nuclei even then? And it came over the Earth's uh, path that we're going through in the International Space Station. This thing is going through on October, way before the X flares tore it apart, it was still 260,000 kilometers wide, the debris trail. Guys, look how big this thing is. This is the Amer- excuse me, world tax slave dollars, $100 billion that they admit to. It's a giant hotel in the sky. Look at this. It won't fit inside a football stadium. I call it the Ark. The Hopi Indian said, when the, you see the great house in the sky fall, it's getting late in the day. That's, check this out. That thing looks like a science fiction movie. They put so many much of our dollars into it. This is a scale. I didn't do this. This is a scale on this in a stadium. Great house in the sky. But they're concerned about it, guys. But there's a lot going on. And I'm working on a video. It's going to take me another day or so. And it's about the Book of Enoch. And as you, these are pictures of Ison. Now, this is before the tail was torn apart on November 19th by the flare. This is one of Bruce Gary's shots here when it was 260,000, 250,000 kilometers or 155,000 miles wide. Us, this, all our satellites, the International Space Station, is going to go through that starting on the 12th of January. Look at that. But they're bragging, God can't penetrate it, my friends. But anyway, I'm working on, I've been looking at the different translations on the book of Enoch that they took out of our Bible. Now, they took it out, Just it's recent history. It was the book between the Old and New Testament. People back then would not have went to church or even considered buying the Bible without, without that book in there. And I've been looking at these translations, guys, and I've got a video that's going to blow your mind. No wonder they took it out. It tells what the evil plan of these end times and what has really happened. And it ties in. It doesn't take away from any of the words of the rest of the Bible. It puts them all together in such a frightening way that it's a whole new ballgame. Christ is coming. He's coming to this earth. And we're going to have that thousand years of millennium with him. But we've been lied to, guys, and when I do this presentation you'll see what I'm mean but it's heads up on all of this guys be safe